Hello besties! Happy October 31st! Forgot to even say Happy Halloween, um, but most importantly, Happy Lauren Hale Day. Some call it Halloween, I call it Lauren Hale Day. So, Happy Lauren Hale Day. That's it, yeah. I'm Larissa, for those of you who do not know, nice to meet ya. For those of you who do know, hello! Welcome back! Hold on, sip sip first. Oh my god, this is so good, y'all. Before y'all in the comment section bombard me, I always tell you what this drink is. But every single time I show it again, more people ask. So let me just say it. It is a venti iced white chocolate mocha, no whip, sweet cream foam instead, extra caramel drizzle. And it is delicious. I call it the Aaron Blackford. Moving on. We're here to do my October wrap up, aka all the books I read in October. I'm gonna go through them with you, tell you a little bit of what they're about and what I rated it. I'm in the car because the people in my house are asleep. And so I don't wanna wake anybody up because we all know how loud I am. So so I'm in my safe space, my vehicle. I feel like I should never explain myself anymore with why I'm in my vehicle. I'm just always here, get used to it. I think I read like 12 books this month, not my worst month, not my best either. There's some good books in here. Let's start, shall we? First and foremost, y'all know that I've been going through the Addicted Calloway Sister series and it has become my favorite series of all time. Nothing can top it. And last month I read Addicted to You and Ricochet. And this month I read Addicted for Now, which was definitely my favorite so far. This book is astonishing. And I also read Kiss the Sky. Yup. And then I went into Hot House Flower. So, um, can you even see these books? Yes or no? So these are the three Addicted Calloway books I read this month. Let me tell you a little bit of what the series is about in case you don't know, and then go into a little bit of these books because I don't want to spoil anything for you if you haven't read the series yet. You know what I mean? The Addicted series is Addicted to You, Ricochet, Addicted for Now, Thrive in Addicted After All. Those are the five books in the Addicted series. The Addicted series follows Lo and Lily, who are childhood best friends. Lo is an alcoholic and Lily is a sex addict. The whole series is about them overcoming that together and becoming healthier versions of themselves, falling in love, and it is incredible. And in the Addicted series, you meet all of their best friends. So you meet Reich Meadows, you meet Connor Cobalt, Rose Calloway, and Daisy Calloway. Daisy Calloway and Rose Calloway, clearly the Calloway sisters, are Lily sisters. And then you have Lauren Hale, Reich Meadows, and Connor Cobalt. So the whole story of Addicted slash Calloway sisters follows those six. And the Addicted books, as I said, are Lily and Lo. But there's a spin-off series, which is called the Calloway Sister series. And that goes into Kiss the Sky, which is number one, Hot House Flower, number two. Then you have Feel the Fire, number three, Long Way Down, number four. And you have an epilogue novel of all of them, which is called Some Kind of Perfect. So the Addicted slash Calloway Sister series is 10 books in total. And a lot of people ask me the reading order. I'm gonna put it right here, a little screenshot of the reading order for you. In the beginning of every single one of the books, they give you a recommended reading order. Since the Addicted series is one series and then the Callaway Sister series is the spin-off of that, you can read them separate. You could just read the Addicted series if you wanted to and you could just read the Callaway Sister series if you want to. But I would highly, highly, hand on fire, don't know why I said that. <laughs> I would highly recommend going in order because it literally just makes the entire series if you read these like intertwined. I know it seems like a lot, but it is so, so, so worth it. I cannot recommend this series enough. It's the best series I've ever read in my entire life. There's nothing like it. Because the thing is, you follow these characters in their lives, but it's not as like drama filled as you would think. So a lot of people's like qualm about this series. I've never used the word qualm before. I don't know why I chose today to start, but I'm going to ride with it. Usually people's qualm about this series is that it's too long, so they feel like it'll be too much drama with everybody, but that's really not the case. Like those six, they are ride or die for each other. You get amazing, epic, incredible love stories. You get this amazing friendship and found family through this group. Like they would all die for each other and these couples are amazing. These friendships are amazing, found family. Like it's incredible and you follow them through their lives. So a lot of things happen to them, but those six are like an impenetrable force together. They're like the Avengers. <laughs> I did not just say that. Anyway, I would highly recommend, like you go through trips with them. You get to see them become famous. You get to see um, their, them build companies together. You get to see um, weddings, proposals, pregnancies. Like you get to live this life with these characters and you grow so fond of them. Like I cannot recommend it enough. Please, please read the Addicted slash Callaway Sister series. With that being said, Addicted for Now was the third one in the Addicted series. So it did follow Lo and Lily. I adored it. I adored it. Five stars. It was incredible. I don't want to give any spoilers. So I don't really want to say at all like what this consists of, but it just continues to follow Lo and Lily's story. And it is 
amazing five stars. And then I went into the Callaway Sister series and that's Kiss the Sky. I also gave it five stars and Hot House Flower also gave it five stars, honestly. So the addicted books are Olo and Lily in the first two, you only get Lily's point of view, but then the third, fourth, and fifth, you do get Lily and Lowe's point of view, which is amazing. And then the Callaway Sister series, you get Kiss the Sky and Feel the Fire are both Rose and Connor's books. You get both of their point of views. And then Hot House Flower and Long Way Down are Rike and Daisy's books, and you get their point of views as well. And then Some Kind of Perfect, the epilogue novel, you get all of their point of views. If you want a series that you are going to fall head over heels, I'm this train behind me. Excuse me, I'm filming quiet on set sir what was i saying oh yeah if you want a series that you're gonna just fall head over heels with and like just become obsessed with all the couples i would highly recommend my favorite couple has to be lilo has to be lily and lo i just adore them so much but connor and rose picture chuck and blair on crack that's connor and rose they're astonishing and then reich and daisy age gap adventurous and like wildness that's them oh my god you get a little bit of everything with these couples and you get amazing love stories and amazing friendships and hilarious too i cannot recommend it enough please read the addicted callaway sister series so those are the first three books i read this month five stars after that i um was sad because i read three addicted callaway sisters books and um i'm almost done with the series so i was a little bit upset so i decided to take a little break because next month i'm definitely gonna finish it which just scares me because i don't want to finish it um, and i went into luna in the lie by mariana zapata we all know mariana zapata is my favorite author of all time this was one of the only books by her that i had not read yet i think i have like two left that i haven't read other than that i've read her whole catalog which is really upsetting because she's my favorite author every time i read one of her books it just like makes me sad that no other books compare but let me tell you what this one is about it's a thick one very slow burn let me say that first and foremost Mariana, if you do not know, is known for slow burn. I'm still going to make that video I told you guys about where I'm going to go into detail about every single one of her books, like an ultimate guide kind of thing, how I did for Colleen. I'm just finishing up the last two books that I have to go through just so I can make that video like having read all of them to give you guys more accurate descriptions, you know? <laughs> so Luna and the Lie is I think her slowest burn that I've read, not going to lie, because Mariana's books are all about like 600 pages. This one is, yeah, 616. Literally, I kid you not. The couple does not get together until like 97% into this book, um, <laughs> which is usually Mariana's books. They don't get together until like 80, 90% anyway. But this one was so slow burn, like insanely slow burn. I enjoyed every second of it though. This one follows Luna and it is told from Luna's point of view. And she works in a car shop, mechanic shop. What are those things called? Mechanics? Dealership? No, that's wrong. A car shop. She's one of those people that paints cars. <laughs> she has this boss Ripley and you get such grumpy sunshine from them too she is extreme sunshine he is extreme um grump and she is I think one of my favorite MCs I've read about um she's very positive very funny like she's such a ball of light I adore her the train again y'all I can't I can't deal hello so Luna basically one day tells a lie for Ripley I'm not gonna tell you what the lie is because um it goes into it in this book and I don't want to spoil it for you. But basically she tells a lie for him. She keeps a secret for him. And he feels like he has to pay her back somehow for that because he thinks it's a really big thing that she did. And that's kind of what it goes into this book. Him wanting to pay her back for this big thing she did for him. It goes into her past, his past. It's incredible. It is really, really good. I rated it five stars because I rate anything Mariana writes five stars. It's not even a question for me. I just adore her so much. It is not my favorite out of every single one I've read, but it is so good. It's definitely up there. It's just not my top five because my top five is very specific Mariana top five. I don't think they'll ever change, but this one's very, very good. I would highly recommend. If you like slow burn though, you have to be patient. So what I did next altered the state of my entire life, basically. I'm not even exaggerating in any way, shape or form. It's like all the trains wanna pass by today. Sheldon Cooper, hello? So what I did next changed my entire life. Um, <laughs> I know that that seems exaggerative, but it's not because I read the Ravenhood trilogy. Oh my God. Just thinking about it makes me wanna cry all over again. Let me explain. So Flock is the first book in the Ravenhood trilogy. And then it goes Exodus. And then it goes The Finish Line. Those are the three books. So here's the thing about the Ravenhood trilogy. Nobody knows anything about it right? I went into this knowing nothing. Like I did not know what it was about. I didn't even know if it was a fantasy, a romance, a thriller, like nothing. Because the back of these books don't tell you anything. And whenever you ask someone, they also don't tell you anything. Like I've seen little quotes here and there, little aesthetic videos, but I never knew what this series consisted of. And that's what I'm going to do to you guys. I am not going to tell you because 
hear me out. The best possible thing you can do with your life is go into these books completely blind. Like go into it not knowing what to expect. It is so worth it. I'll read you the back. Maybe that will help you. Can you keep a secret? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna get emotional. I grew up sick. Let me clarify. I grew up believing that real love stories included a martyr or a demand great sacrifice to be worthy. Because of that, I believed it because I made myself believe it. And I bred the most masochist of romantic hearts, which resulted in my illness. When I lived this story, my own twisted fairy tale, it was unbeknownst to me at the time because I was young and naive. I gave into temptation and fed the beating beast, which grew thirstier with every slash, every strike, every blow. Triple falls wasn't at all what it seemed, nor were the men that swept me under their wing. But in order to to keep them, I had to be in on their secrets. Secrets that cost us everything to keep. That's the novelty of fiction versus reality. You can't relive your own love story because by the time you realized you're living it, it's over. At least that was the case for me and the men I trusted my foolish heart to. Looking back, I'm convinced I willed my story into existence due to my illness and all were punished. Did that tell you anything? No, right? But now rereading that back after reading the trilogy, it explains everything but you just don't get it at the time. This entire book, I had no idea what was going on. I read this book completely clueless the entire time. And by the end of it, I was still pretty, pretty clueless. Maybe by the end of this book, I knew like 5% of what was going on, barely. I was confused the entire time. And yet I still rated it a 4.5 because I still loved it so much. I just was so confused, no idea what was going on, right? But then I went into Exodus. As much as I was so confused in this book, this book explained everything to me, it all, clicked it all came together what was going on i died a little inside like this book took a part of me i'll never get it back it just took everything <laughs> this book single-handedly took my heart threw it on the streets let 50 cars run it over then went over there picked it back up and ate it this book took everything from me and i would highly recommend and then i didn't want to even go into the last book i'm not gonna lie because the second book hurt me so much but this book was healing so as much as i was confused in the first one sad in the second one I was healed in the third one. This was the perfect finish line. Literally, it just ties everything together. Everything from these books, it ties in here. You understand every character more. My entire soul would recommend this to you. I rated the first one 4.5 because I was insanely confused, but I still loved every second. I rated the second one five stars, five million if I could, and the finish line five stars as well, five million if I could. This is my favorite trilogy of all time. I read it like three weeks ago, and it's still hard for me to wake up every day and go on knowing that I would never read this again for the first time. It seems like I'm exaggerating, but the way I cried at the Starbucks drive through thinking of this, the way I cried at the gym on the treadmill thinking about this, like I still cry if I let myself think about it too much. Every time it rains, I cry because of what happens in this book. Read this, read this. Yes. After Ravenhood, I felt empty and I felt like um, I had nothing to live for really. I decided that it would be a good idea for me to go into a mafia book because I was like, oh, maybe it'll like get me out of this reading slump because I did not read for a week straight after Ravenhood. I couldn't, I couldn't pick up anything. So I, I got uh, my handy dandy Kindle and I read, uh, what did I even read? I read Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. Sweet Temptation follows Cassio and Julia. <laughs> so her name's spelled with a G. It's like G-U-I, uh, whatever. Like it's spelled like Gulia. And that's what I kept calling her until I realized that it was most definitely Julia. <laughs> Fun fact. So it follows them too when you get multiple POVs. It is a mafia romance. So throw your feminism out the window when you go to read these, just know. So Cassio is like the underboss of Philadelphia and his wife mysteriously dies and nobody knows if he killed his wife or if she just died. He has to take on a new wife because apparently mafia leaders, uh, they have to have wives. I don't know. He also has two kids. So he needs somebody to take care of his kids and take care of his body. Um, <laughs> so he marries this girl, Julia. Her father gives him julia because again mafia pick up your feminism just chuck that shit don't don't look back when you're reading these mafia books i love it though he's in his 30s and she's 18 so there is an age gap in this and it's a marriage of convenience and she goes to live in his house she goes to take care of his kids and you get that love story between them i did not love this book i will say i don't know if it's because it was right after ravenhood and nothing was comparing for me maybe if i would have read it at a different time in my life i would like it way more i didn't love it i rated it a 3.5 it was definitely just like a like a chill book it was the most chill mafia book ever Ever. like there were no like bloody guts and like crazy things going on 
Um, it was very chill for a mafia book. It was more wholesome, more domestic. If I'm reading a mafia book, like, give me some fucking mafia shit, you know? Give me some Abruzzi in this bitch, you know, if you guys watch Prison Break. <laughs> but yeah, I liked it. I just didn't love it. It was just kind of there. It was just kind of chill. Nothing memorable, but nothing that I would, like, puke on either. It was okay. Next up, I read Reminders of Him, Shoddy Bays. Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. So this is an arc. This book comes out January 18th of 2022. It was amazing. It was amazing. We all know Colleen doesn't miss. We all know Colleen's one of my favorite authors. Essentially, it is about this girl, Kenna. So Kenna is in jail for five years because of a horrible, tragic mistake. And after she gets out, she goes back to the town where everything went wrong to go get her daughter because she has a daughter that she has never seen and she wants to get to know her daughter. However, everybody in her daughter's life does not want her to meet her daughter and to be in her life except for Ledger. Ledger Ward, he is a local bar owner and he's very close to Kenna's daughter and he is like her in to getting to know her daughter but nobody else wants her to. So you get a love story in this book, right? But it, there's so much more than that. Kenna, what she went through is something that a lot of people go through. In the end of this book, Colleen even says like, there's Kenna's everywhere. And I adored seeing Kenna try to pick up her life again. And I adored seeing Ledger try to help her do that. And it was so much more than just a love story. There's so much more than just romance. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I rated it five stars. It was amazing. I cried at the end. I didn't cry throughout the book. I cried at the end because it was beautiful. Nothing like sobbing or anything like that. It was and in the vibes of like it ends with us ugly love november 9th like not those vibes where you're like holy holy shit what just happened it was more in the vibes of like oh you're perfect where it's a really sad beautiful story that you follow i would highly recommend you go pre-order this first of all look at the cover the cover is gorgeous and reminders of him and the cover makes so much sense after you finish the book i love that i would highly recommend it's also dual pov <laughs> what i read next hold on listen listen did i read lilac yes <laughs> Okay, let me just say it's 600 pages of pure porn. Like, I read porn. Ah, there's nothing wrong with that. Gotta love that for me, you know? Ah. Let me try to explain this book to the best of my abilities. You, <laughs> there's this girl, Braxton. And when one of the members of a very famous band called Bound dies, she gets hired to be their new guitarist. And they're like a rock, very, very famous band. And she meets her three new bandmates, Lo, Houston, and Jericho. Um, and yeah, it's a love story between her and all three of them. Uh, it is a reverse harem. If you don't know what a reverse harem is, um, a harem is when it's one guy and multiple girls. And then a reverse harem is when it's one girl and three or more guys. In a reverse harem, they don't have to choose. Like they're just with them all. You don't have to choose one. And that's what it is in this book. Um, <laughs> It was just porn. Yeah, it was just porn. I have no excuse for this. I loved the aesthetic of like her getting to know these bandmates and going on tour with them because she goes on tour with them for a year. So you get to see like the tour life, you get to see concerts, you get to see the rock star lifestyle and you get to see their stories which go way deeper than I expected it to and you get all of their point of views. So you get Braxton, Lowe, Houston and Jericho's point of view. Love that part. I did rate it a 3.5 because there was no plot. Like the plot, non-existent. It was kind of there, but like I feel like the plot was just like all over the place. I don't really know what was going on. The only thing that was consistent was sex yeah all over this book just everywhere everywhere you can possibly think of there was if you want to skip this part for like spoiler purposes go ahead but i'll just tell you some places um central park yeah uh someone's grandma's house the club on the side of the tour bus my personal favorite church like church like actually church like where you go to church yeah uh-huh you know this is one of my first like real reverse harems so i think i just wasn't fucking prepared i loved loved those scenes don't get me wrong the way i tapped every single one if it had more plot this would have been five stars for me it's just that the plot wasn't there i liked the characters but i got annoyed a lot some of it seemed a little bit over dramatic and like i was like where did that come from braxton was a bad bitch i did enjoy that the guys were all very cool it's just that i feel the story could have had more. If it would have given me more plot, I feel like this would have been a five star for me because the sex scenes were amazing. Don't get me wrong. Picture the most descriptive sex scenes and picture them in every single chapter. That's what you get from Lilac. I honestly, I think you should read it. <laughs>
<laughs> I just really wish there was more plot, which is why I rated it 3.5. Then next I read The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams on my Kindle. I don't have the copy of The Cheat Sheet right now because my bestie Rose, um, she's annotating it for me because it's one of her favorite books. So she's gonna mail it to me after she's done. So I don't have a copy of it, but I read it on my Kindle. This book was such a cute romance. Everything that Lilac was, this was the exact opposite because this was just a cute rom-com. This book follows Nathan and Brie and you get both point of views. So Nathan is a professional football player and Brie is a ballerina and they have been best friends since high school. But both of them have been pining for each other for that long as well. He loves her, she loves him, but they don't tell each other. We just see it in both point of views. And this isn't a spoiler by the way, it's literally in the description of the book. I love Friends to Lovers. I love it. I adore it. And this book did a really, really, really good job in Friends to Lovers. It's my favorite trope. And there is also fake dating in this book too. It's so good. I adored those parts. One thing, this book is new adult, but there is no spice in it at all. So if you want something that's just very, very, very cute rom-com, I would go into this book. There's no spice though. It's fade to black. Nathan and Brie were so cute. I love Brie. She was one of my faves contemporary MCs. She wasn't one of those annoying MCs. She was very funny. She was very confident, but at the same time, not cocky. She was so nice and sweet to everybody around her. Nathan was everything. I picture this couple, Nathan and Brie, I picture a lot of Nathan and Haley vibes from One Tree Hill. That's what I was picturing when I was reading. It just reminded me of them a lot. I adored it. It was so cute. If you like sports romance because he's a football player, if you like one of them being famous because he is, fake dating, friends to lovers, very cute rom-com. I think you would like this book. I rated it a 4.5. The only reason why I didn't rate it a 5 is because some parts were a little bit too cheesy for me, including the ending. Some of it was like a little bit too much for my liking, even though I adored it. I loved every second of it. I just ducked 0.5 just for the cheesiness factor but it didn't affect how much i adored this book because i did so then um <laughs> yesterday when i didn't have anything to read and i only had one day left of the month i was like what do i read i have a huge stack of books i haven't read yet so i decided to reread the deal common sense i threw that shit out you guys know i love the deal I love it. I'm not even going to talk about it all that much. You guys know it's five stars. You guys watched me read it. I love this book. So I decided to reread it and it was almost even better the second time around. There are four books in the off-campus series. It's The Deal, The Mistake, The Score, and The Goal. And then there's also a spin-off of off campus, which is called Briar U. And that is the chase, the risk, the play, and the dare. And each of them are about different couples in this hockey team. The deal is about Gary Graham, who is the star hockey player, captain of the hockey team. And he meets Miss Hannah Wells and asks her to tutor him. It is friends to lovers. It is everything. You get both POVs. All of off campus is everything, but the deal is definitely the best one. In this book, you meet uh, all the guys that you're going to see other books about. You meet John Logan, who The Mistake is about, the second book. You meet Dean De Laurentiis, who the third book is about, the score. And then you meet John Tucker, who the fourth book is about. All of them follow different love stories. Same with Briar U. I would highly recommend, honestly. Off campus just gives you a feeling like no other. It is so, so good. If you like college romances, sports romances, just fun stories, but also they go deeper. You probably really like this. Like a lot of people are like, oh, off campus is so trashy. And I'm like, so I'm reading it for that exact reason, bitch. What you mean? Anyway, Gare Graham until the end of time. Yes, the deal, five stars. That's it. That's all I read this month. I read 12 books this month. Like I said, not my best month, but not my worst month either. So I would say it's a win. I did stop reading for an entire week and a half after Ravenhood. So I'm blaming it on that. Before I leave, let me just say something I have to say every single time in these videos. Don't compare what you read to somebody else. If you read 15 books this month, awesome. If you read zero, awesome. If you read one, awesome. Who cares? Read however much you want, whenever you want. This is all for fun. Don't let yourself get caught up in how many books you read. That's it, besties. I hope you guys have a great day. I love you!